How do I stop my puppy from biting my ankles when nothing is working? You've tried saying ouch and it just makes your puppy more excited and more likely to bite you. You've stood still and sometimes it works. Like this black puppy, you can see the puppy is just sort of mouthing on the trouser legs and when the person stands still, the puppy stops and then you can offer the puppy a toy. That's great if that works. But look at the white puppy biting and just pulling on the pants and really pretty ferocious. That's not going to help to stand still. When you stand still then, your puppy's just going to continue to bite. What do you do then? Get yourself behind a gate. I always have lots of gates in my house when I have a puppy at every doorway. You can see the brown gate here and the white gate. And those gates are always there, yes, to keep the puppy in the room, but also to give me an access to, to get away from the puppy. As soon as the puppy bites, go behind the gate. I stay there for about two to three minutes. And as you can see here with the Labrador puppy sitting behind the gate, the owner's on the other side, or the Italian Greyhound puppy, behind the gate. The owner is on the other side and so the puppy is learning when they bite their owner goes away. I don't wait any longer than two to three minutes and then I return back to my puppy. I always have a toy in my hand. I keep lots of toys behind the gates, on tables, everywhere that I can always get to a toy before I go back to my puppy. So I go in, I hand my puppy a toy, and my puppy is redirected away from biting my ankles. When your puppy starts to bite your ankles again, you just go behind the gate. So what happens when your puppy is hanging on to your pants and you can't even get away? Well, I always leave these little sections of a puppy pen and I leave them sitting against the wall. And if I have a puppy who is hanging on to my ankles and just is growling and really just over the top, I just take a section of the puppy pen and just slide it between the puppy and me. And I stand there and I wait for my three minutes. All you're doing is telling the puppy when they bite you, you're gone, you leave. Make sure you always have a toy when you open up the gate, open up the gate, offer the puppy a toy. In that way, your puppy will learn when they bite, you leave them. When they play nice and don't bite, you stay and play. Same thing a puppy would teach another puppy. When they bite too hard, all play stops. There are some puppies that need more control. Here's a picture of a puppy wearing a harness and a leash. I can control him so that if he starts to bite at my ankles, I'm able to pick up the leash and hold him away long enough that I can get behind a gate and then I drop the leash. I'm controlling him, but I'm not moving him behind the gate. That works well if you have kids and the puppy is biting at your child. You walk over, you pick up the leash, you move the puppy away from the child and ask the child and you to go behind the gate, leave the puppy in the room. The puppy knows that whenever they play too rough, all people leave them. My last choice is to put the puppy behind a gate. I like to remove myself because I think the puppy understands it better as if another puppy leaves and stops playing. But you can create a little timeout area for your puppy, pick up the leash and lead your puppy to that gated area, put the puppy behind the gate, and they stay there for a couple minutes. When you go over to let them out of the gated area, make sure you have a toy with you and offer them the toy as they come back into the area with you. 
The first part of this video is, what do I do when my puppy is biting? Second part is, why is my puppy biting? Well, it's a normal puppy behavior. They explore everything with their mouth and they learn bite inhibition by playing with other puppies. When, the, when they bite down too hard on the puppy's ear, the puppy yelps and the play stops, which is what you're doing. One of the main ones is, has your puppy had enough exercise? I like, as soon as I can get my puppy outside, to put a harness and a long leash on them. And you can see Willie here in my yard, take with you lots of toys when you go outside so you can play with your puppy and redirect them away if they want to start to bite on you. If they do bite on you when you're outside, step behind a gate, move somewhere where your puppy can't reach you for two minutes, and then come back to the puppy always with a toy. So you can do the same thing outside as you do inside. Now, when you're playing with your puppy and they're racing and running, puppies need to gallop. So they're gonna be tired. What I do next is I take my puppy for a walk. If they can't be down on the ground, if the vaccines are not completed, I carry them in a little bag over my shoulder. I let them see the world, which will also tire them out. Here is a puppy sniffing. It's so important to give your puppy the opportunity to sniff the grass, to walk on different surfaces, and to enjoy just being outside. They will come home from a walk very tired if you allow them to sniff. If you don't and hold them close and tell them they must be walking right beside you, your dog will not be as tired because they haven't had a chance to use all their natural instincts to enjoy the walk. When you do come back to the house, be prepared. Have your Kong in the freezer ready to come out and give to your puppy. Here's a picture of the black puppy working on their Kong. The Kong helps your puppy to relax after a walk, after playing. Frozen marrow bones are great for puppies. It helps and it feels good and cold on their mouth if they're teething. One of the best things is a treat dispensing ball. Here is Snoop with his Omega Paw Tricky Treat Ball. And I'll put the links to all of these things in the description below. Snoop loves his roll a treat ball. It allows him exercise, fun, and he gets his dog food from the ball. So he's getting his breakfast. The elk antler, a great chew for your puppy, and it will decrease your puppy's tendency to bite you. There are many other puzzle games that you can get for your puppy to use their brain. Here is Snoop with his dog brick. This is only the first day that he's had it, and he loves it so much. He's learned how to take the little bones out, open up the boxes, push the boxes aside, all that in one day. And that mentally tires your puppy. Mentally tired as well as physically tired, and your puppy is less likely to bite your ankles. Two other great things for your puppy is the licky mat, where you can put their meal on the licky mat and allow your puppy to lick. And also the Himalayan chew, which is a great chew for a puppy. Another reason your puppy may bite your ankles is because they're too tired, too overstimulated. Make sure that before your puppy gets too tired, you stop, take a break, let them rest in their puppy pen or in their crate with one of their toys so that they are not so over the top that they're going to stop playing with the toy and bite your ankles. Puppies can actually be taught to bite if there's someone in the house who is using their hands to wrestle with them, to push them back and forth and encourage the puppy to use their mouth to come forward, or with their feet and they're shuffling their feet back and forth and letting the puppies chase them. Or you put your feet under the blankets and you move the blankets around and let your puppy bite the blankets. You're teaching your puppy to bite. So remember, 
whenever your puppy starts to bite you, if you've played those games, just get up, walk away, go behind a gate, and stop the biting now. The third part of this video is how to teach your puppy not to bite your ankles. And that is with training exercises. First thing, I always hand feed my puppy. Now here is a woman with a puppy on her lap and she is taking each piece and letting the puppy eat the food from her hand. It teaches a puppy to have a gentle mouth and it also tells the puppy that hands are good. One exercise we used to do in puppy class, while the puppies were eating their meal, we would drop treats into the bowl, telling the puppy that as you approached with your hands, you were bringing them good things. Another exercise to do is, while the puppy's eating and comfortable with you around the bowl, you pet your puppy. Pet them over their head, over their body, let them know that you can be near them when they eat, and then while, they're, while you're petting them, drop in a treat. These are ways to help your puppy know that hands are good and they're not gonna try to bite your hands or bite your ankles. One of the most important training exercises I do with a puppy are handling exercises. Here's a picture of Snoop eating the food from his Kong and the owner is petting him. And you see how Snoop stays with the Kong even when her hand comes over his head so that he's now believing the Kong is good so hands are good when they approach. So Snoop is less likely to bite the owner's hand. While your puppy is licking the food from his Kong, this is the greatest time to pet your puppy all over. Touch their face, their ears, their feet, their body, rub their tummy. Let them know that hands are good. When your puppy is carrying a toy, they can't bite your ankles. Every time my puppy picks up a toy, I'm always saying, good girl, good boy. Here's a picture of Willie with her donut. She's carrying the donut, tossing it, playing with it, and the owner is continually praising her for carrying the donut. And here's a picture of Snoop with his tiger. He loves to carry his tiger. He's so proud. And his owner is always telling Snoop what a great boy he is for carrying his tiger. Snoop and Willie are learning not to bite ankles by carrying toys. Here is a video of a puppy following a toy on a leash and not biting the owner's ankles. Start with the toy, praise them for carrying it, then tie a leash around the toy, move it slowly, keep the puppy interested, and then you can start to drag the toy and the puppy will be so interested in the toy, they're not gonna bite your ankles. That's a great way to teach your puppy not to bite your ankles while you're moving. Reward for calm. Boy, that's a great way to stop biting ankles. All you have to do, here's a picture of Willie, crate doors open, she just went in and laid down on the mat, and her owner is telling her what a good girl she is. The more you praise your puppy for being calm, the more they're going to try to be calm, they'll be less likely to bite you. Teach your puppy to sit. Basic commands are what's going to help you to stop your puppy from biting your ankles. Practice it all the time. You walk through the house, you walk up with a treat, you ask your puppy to sit, you give them a treat, and you walk away. A few minutes later, do it again. Repeat it over and over and over again. So your puppy always knows, every time I sit, I get a treat. Because at this stage, you want them to think that. Then, when your puppy is starting to bite on your ankles, ask your puppy to sit. It's one of the greatest ways to teach your puppy not to bite your ankles. So that's it for this video. What should I do when my puppy is biting my ankles? Why is my puppy biting my ankles? And how can I teach my puppy not to bite my ankles? Here are some other videos that you might find helpful. This is the puppy biting playlist. Also, what to buy for my new puppy haul how to potty train my puppy to go outside fast. 
Hope you've enjoyed this video. Please press like, subscribe, ring the bell so that you receive all my future episodes. Thank you. Leave me a comment. Bye from Joyce at Diamond Dog Training. Bye-bye.